Welcome back to the Ummah Dilemma. Now American forces have attacked Syria in the name of self-defense after Iran-backed militia groups attacked two US facilities in Iraq. While the atrocities in Palestine are still rife, all in the name of jihad or Israeli self-defense, we have Syria under attack by US forces. So what we have is the whole of the Muslim world rocking with bombs and missiles and all sorts of devastating attacks. But who is responsible? The Israeli forces responded to Hamas's attack on Israel. Hamas say it was an act of jihad. Militia attacks are carried out in Syria in the name of jihad again and US plays victim and responds with much larger scale military strikes. Who is behind all this? Because both the initial attacks in question are not backed by Palestinian Authority or the Syrian government. Both were carried out by militant groups. Both groups are backed by Iran's Revolutionary Guard, which is backed by the Iranian government. So the only militant group backed by a government is the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. And they seem to be calling all shots in militia attacks in the Muslim world that we have recently witnessed, first in Israel and now in Syria. That is simply why Muslim countries have no voice. Their leaders, however rightly or wrongly elected or chosen or installed, have no say in what happens in their lands. Yet they have to face the heat of attacks carried out by Western forces on their people. I mean, Let's take Britain for example. Rishi Sunak recently visited the Middle East and uh, met leaders of uh, countries in the region. Not everyone in Britain supports Rishi Sunak's statements made there in the Middle East, but whatever he said is seen as the stance of Great Britain by the international community. Joe Biden's statement might not reflect the sentiments of the um, American general public, but what he says is seen as the stance of the United States of America. So, as long as general public in the Islamic world choose to be spearheaded by militant organizations, they will find no voice in the international community. Muslim leaders, as in the politically elected leaders, have lost their grip on militant organizations who crack the whip and these political leaders just dance to the music. So, to recover from what the Muslim world is embroiled in, it's the political leaders who need to become the voice of their people, to become their representatives, to speak to world leaders on behalf of their people. Because in the given situation, only Iran seems to be settling their score with the Western powers and all Muslim countries are having to suffer. So when someone says Muslims need to unite, it means Muslim countries, their leadership, not militant organizations uniting under one umbrella militia group. Thank you very much for watching.